Hello students, in today's video we are going to discuss uh, physiology of uh, growth hormone also called as somatotropin. We will also discuss pharmacology of somatropin. Somatropin is an analog of uh, natural growth hormone. It is similar to growth hormone in structure and function. Somatropin is synthesized using recombinant DNA technology. Now, growth hormone or uh, somatotropin is a peptide hormone and it is synthesized and secreted by the anterior pituitary. Now, as the name suggests, the growth hormone regulates growth of the entire body, uh, but it plays a very important and uh, a very basic role in the growth of muscles, skeletal muscles and bones during puberty and throughout the life. Now, excess secretion of growth hormone during childhood uh, can cause abnormal increase in height, while its deficiency can produce dwarfism. Now, look at this figure. It explains regulation of secretion of growth hormone. Now, this is the zoomed view of uh, hypothalamus. Now, located below the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland. Now, as we know, there are two lobes of the pituitary gland, anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. This is anterior pituitary. Now, hypothalamus produces uh, GHRH, that is growth hormone, releasing hormone. Now, this hormone stimulates anterior pituitary to produce growth hormone. Now, growth hormone further stimulates liver to produce insulin-like growth factor 1. Uh, in short, IGF-1. IGF-1 is also called as uh, somatomedine. Now, growth hormone regulates uh, growth of uh, the entire body tissues by virtue of its direct actions as well as its indirect actions. Now, direct actions are the actions of growth hormone itself, while indirect actions are mediated by insulin-like growth factor 1. Now, the main function of uh, insulin-like growth factor 1, that is IGF-1, is to stimulate growth of skeletal muscles and also to stimulate growth of bones. Now, IGF-1 increases muscular strength and it also induces increase in the bone mass, thickening of the bones and it also leads to increase in the length of bone. Now, because of the increase in the length of bone, it increases the height of individual. Now, rise in the blood levels of uh, growth hormone or IGF-1 more than the normal sends negative feedback signals to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus reduces secretion of growth hormone, releasing hormone that further reduces secretion of growth hormone and brings it back to the normal. Similarly, fall in the blood levels of growth hormone or IGF-1 less than the normal uh, the levels become less than the normal sends positive feedback signals to the hypothalamus. Here hypothalamus increases the secretion of growth hormone releasing hormone that further increase secretion of growth hormone and brings it towards the normal. So this is how as per the requirement of body blood levels of growth hormone are maintained. Uh, now, let's discuss physiological functions of uh, growth hormone, direct actions and indirect actions. Now, let's first discuss the direct actions of growth hormone. Now, growth hormone produces metabolic effects on liver, adipose tissue and the muscles. Now, first is the effect on liver. Now, growth hormone promotes increased gluconeogenesis that is a synthesis of glucose from the non-carbohydrate sources like amino acid. Now growth hormone also promotes breakdown of uh, glycogen to glucose. The process is called as glycogenolysis and this also increases the blood glucose levels. So by increasing gluconeogenesis and glycogen, uh, glycogenolysis on one hand growth hormone increases the blood glucose levels but on the other hand uh, growth hormone reduces the uptake of uh, glucose by the body cells. Now growth hormone increases the 
uh, insulin resistance. Now, insulin is required for the uptake of glucose from the blood by the body cells. Now, growth hormone prevents the uptake of glucose by the body cells by increasing the insulin resistance. Now, in addition to this, the growth hormone also promotes breakdown of lipids. That is, it increases the lipolysis in the adipose tissue. Now, this promotes utilization of fat. Another very important uh, uh, action of growth hormone is on the skeletal muscles. Now, growth hormone increases uptake of amino acids. Thereby, it increases the synthesis of uh, proteins in the skeletal muscles. Now, this is responsible for the growth of muscles and increase in the muscular strength. Now, indirect effects of uh, uh, growth hormone are mediated by insulin-like growth factor 1, that is IGF-1. Now, IGF-1 causes uh, growth stimulation in the skeletal muscles by increasing the synthesis of proteins. And this increases the muscular strength. Now, IGF-1 also induces growth of bones. It uh, increases the production of uh, collagen type 1 and uh, it also increases the synthesis of proteoglycan in the bones. And further, it regulates the activity of bone cells that is the osteoclast and osteoblast. Thus, uh, insulin-like growth factor 1 increases the bone mass and it also increases the thickness of bones. The bones become strong. Now, IGF-1 also enhances lengthwise or longitudinal growth of bones and thus increase height during uh, childhood and during puberty occurs because of IGF-1. So, growth hormone is responsible for the growth of entire body, but it plays a fundamental very important role in the development of uh, skeletal muscles and the bones. Now, as we have understood the metabolic functions of uh, growth hormone, let's see to the factors that uh, stimulate the release of uh, growth hormone releasing hormone or stimulate the release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary. Now, reduced blood glucose, increased amino acids in the blood, reduced fatty acids in the blood, these all stimulate the secretion of growth hormone. Now, in addition to this exercise, fasting and stress also stimulate release of growth hormones. Uh, now, let's discuss in brief on the diseases associated with the hypersecretion and hyposecretion of the growth hormone. Now, gigantism is a rare hormonal disease. Now, excessive production of growth hormone before the epiphyseal closure of the bones in childhood and during adolescence can lead to excessive longitudinal growth of the bones, that is, uh, increase in the length of the bones. Now, this may lead to abnormal increase in the height and the patient may grow to heights as much as 8 feet. Then uh, acromegaly. Acromegaly is caused due to overproduction of growth hormone during adulthood. That is in the middle aged adults. Now the bones become abnormally thick, especially in hands, feet and the face. So adults with acromegaly show characteristic facial features of large lower jaw, prominent forehead and large hands and feet. Now, analogues of uh, somatostatin or growth hormone inhibitors are used in the treatment of gigantism and acromegaly. Now, growth hormone inhibitors reduce the secretion of growth hormone and they are useful in the management of these diseases. Now, hyposecretion of growth hormone can lead to stunted growth in the uh, children, leading to the short heights. Now, pituitary dwarfism is uh, characterized by the reduced synthesis and secretion of growth hormone by the anterior pituitary. Now, deficiency of 
uh, this growth hormone in the children can lead to dwarfism that is short heights uh, stunted growth now deficiency of growth hormone in adults occurs rarely but if it occurs it leads to a low muscle and low bone mass now this reduces the work capacity of the individual and further uh, deficiency of the growth hormone uh, prevents the breakdown of lipids now this causes hyperlipidemia that means this increases the levels of lipids in the blood and which in turn increases the risk of atherosclerosis and the cardiovascular disorders now analogs of growth hormone uh, that is somatropin is recommended in the treatment of uh, pituitary dwarfism and in the treatment of uh, deficiency of growth hormone in the adults so these are the uh, diseases that are caused due to the hypersecretion and hyposecretion of the growth hormone after somatotropin uh, that is a natural growth hormone uh, let's discuss the pharmacology of somatropin now somatropin is a preparation of growth hormone or we can say uh, that uh, somatropin is a growth hormone analog and it is used for the clinical purpose now somatropin is identical to natural growth hormone that is produced in the body somatropin is a synthetic growth hormone that is prepared by the recombinant dna technology and uh, somatropin is administered by subcutaneous or by intramuscular injection now primary indication of uh, somatropin is pituitary dwarfism in the children it can be used uh, for the treatment of uh, pituitary dwarfism if it is administered before the epiphyseal closure of the bones now somatropin increases height of these children and it is also used in the treatment of uh, children with the short stature or short height associated with turner syndrome and short height associated with the chronic kidney disease now next indication uh, where somatropin can be used is the deficiency of uh, growth hormone in the adults now deficiency of growth hormone in adults can be caused because of pituitary disease or it can be caused because of uh, uh, the disease of hypothalamus or can be uh, because of a surgery radiation therapy or trauma now so uh, somatropin increases the lean body mass of these individuals and improve their energy levels uh, in addition to this somatropin is also indicated for the treatment of uh, aids related wasting now somatropin increases uh, lean body mass it uh, increases body weight and improves the physical strength or stamina of uh, patients suffering with the aids now let's talk about the adverse effects of somatropin now adverse effects include pain at the injection site uh, lipodystrophy glucose intolerance hypothyroidism salt and water retention hand stiffness myalgia that is muscle pain headache these all adverse effects can occur because of the somatropin now in few cases in few instances somatropin can cause rise in the intracranial tension so this is in uh, this is in brief information on growth hormone and its analog that is the somatropin please note that the information provided in this video is meant only for students from their examination point of view for clinical use of growth hormone analog uh, that is somatropin kindly consult your physician if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video